Today, we're doing the third installment of our lift pump test series. And on the bench, we have the FAST 240 gallon power pump. Okay, so here it is. This is the FAST Titanium Series 240 gallon per hour pump. This thing is rated at 240 gallons per hour at 45 psi. They rate this up to 1200 horsepower in a P pump application. So we're going to see what kind of numbers we can get out of this. This is the same test stand that we've been using in other videos. If you want to go back and relearn about the parameters, feel free. But today we're just going to jump right into testing and see if this guy can flow. One thing that we would like to add is that we won't be able to test this pump to as high a pressure as the previous one because it draws a lot more current and uh, unfortunately it maxes out my bench power supply. So, But we will be able to test it to its advertised 45 PSI, right. yes? Yes. Just not the 16 to 80 PSI. Correct. Okay, so at least we can test what it's advertised at. So we're going to jump right into this now and see what kind of flow numbers we can get out of this guy. Let's fire it up. So right off the bat, it looks like we're just barely touching 201 gallons per hour at 22 PSI on the clean side of the filter. We're drawing about 13 and a half amps at 14.2 volts. So we'll dial the pressure up and see how that changes. So at 45 PSI, we're only flowing 177 gallons an hour, drawing 17.2 amps. However, if you'll notice the uh, bypass flow, the return to the tank cracked open earlier than the previous fast pump. So I'll back this off until that flow drops to a trickle. Right about there, I, I suppose. So 188 gallons an hour at 40 PSI. So it seems right about 42 is where that valve starts to crack open, which was different. The previous one, if I recall correctly, was 47 PSI it started to crack at. So we'll put it at 45 PSI, which is the uh, manufacturer's rated pressure. Looking right about 1.9 PSI worth of drop across the, uh, the filter. So now we'll fire up the fire up the motor and give it an RPM signal and then we'll be able to see what the injection rate is. So we'll start at 2000 RPM. So 2000 RPM it can support 1800 cc's. So 4000 RPM will be 930 cc's. And 6000 RPM will be 628 cc's. 625. We'll take the voltage up to 16 to simulate a race truck running a 16 volt lithium cell. So 18.3 amps and it's moving 197 gallons an hour. So we'll take this bit back down to 42 so there's no bypass flow and 211 gallons an hour. So we picked up, picked up almost 15 gallons an hour there just by closing that bypass. So we've got numbers now for the uh, stock configuration with the tank return. Now we're going to block that off and see where we can go with it. So now we've got the tank return capped off so we'll be able to see what the pump actually flows in total. All right, so we're going to set it to 45 PSI, which is factory spec. And it looks like we're flowing 188 gallons an hour, drawing about 17 amps. And at 2000 RPM, this will support 100 and, well, 1900 cc's, 1900 cc's. 4000 RPM will be about 900 75, 9, 980 cc's. And at 6,000 RPM, we're down to 660. So 
So now we'll crank the voltage up to 16 to simulate a race truck. So 18.4 amps, and we're flowing about, now let's turn the, get the, set the pressure back to 45 PSI now. So 212, 213 gallons an hour. That would support 1200 cc's of fuel at 2000 RPM. 4,000 RPM, we're down to 1,110 cc's. And it's 6,000 RPM, uh, 750, pretty much right on the money. We'll crank the pressure up now and see what kind of uh, pressure we can get out of this before the power supply switches into current protection mode. So there's our 20 amps. Might be able to tease a little more out of it because there's always some safety factor that we can exploit. We'll know we've hit the limit when the voltage drops off of 16. So yeah, there's 15.8, so we've hit it. So we'll dial back just a little bit. So we're at 16 volts and 20.5 amps, roughly. So 201 gallons an hour at 59.4 PSI. So now we'll drop the voltage back down to 14.2 which will be typical in your street truck with a charging system. So we're, we dropped a whole amp there, so we're down to 19.5 amps and 180, 179 gallons an hour at 58 PSI. So let's see how far we can take this up. So there we've started to drop the voltage again. So we're back up to 20.6 amps. Got 65 PSI out of it and looking about 173, 174 gallons an hour. So if we take the pressure back down to 45 with no, uh, no return flow or no, uh, no tank return flow, about 188 gallons an hour is what we're seeing, 189. There you have it. All right, the test is now over. What are our thoughts on this pump? First off, we were not able to make the flow. Our best case, that 45 PSI was around 185 gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. That's at 14 volts, and that was with the return kept yeah. off. So I feel the same way about this pump as I did the other smaller pump. You need to make sure you're not bleeding stuff back. So this thing would be nicer if it opened at a higher pressure. If you have an overflow valve that's a constant bleed, like just an orifice that bleeds out a little bit, that's going to really hurt the performance of this pump. You want to have something that's like a, a pop-off valve or your normal spring check valve so where it's actually stopped until that pressure is reached and then it bleeds back because it, I mean, it dropped us almost eight or ten gallons per hour, eight gall gallons per hour. So really important that that is closed off. Um, so even though it didn't make the flow, it still advertises up to 1200 horsepower. So we were looking at the data logs, looking at the numbers. What do we think? Do you think it supports it? So it, it supports about 860 cc's roughly at uh, 4500 RPM. Mm -hmm. And 5000 RPM was about 750. So that's I mean, yeah, you're basically right there if you figure one and a half horsepower per, per cc. Um, I mean, I think 800 that's... To give you right, 800 cc is right at 1200 horsepower. Yeah, so, I mean, it kind of depends on where you want to make your power, too, you know. Yeah, so if you have a big, if you have a set of compounds, you can make your power at much lower RPM because you have a lot more boost. So you may be able to do 1200 horsepower with this if you want to keep it at 
4,500 RPM and below. If you want to go up to 5,000, 5,500 RPM on a big single, that's questionable. Yeah. So really, can it support 200 horsepower? I think it can. Can it support at 5,000, 5,500 RPM? I don't think so. My personal opinion. So one other note on uh, this is that on the other fast pump, we saw that the relief valve started to crack open at about 47 PSI, whereas this one started to crack at about 42. As far as I know, there's not an adjustment in there. I haven't taken it apart to see, um, but that is one thing that is one thing to be aware of with this style of pump. There's going to be some inconsistency from model to model that might affect the actual flow rate. So you're kind of at the mercy of wherever the crack pressure is on that valve. Yeah. So like if it's me, I'm capping this off and I'm making sure my return is a spring check return. Well, is that it for this test? I think so. I think we're going to you'll stick around. We'll see the chart we're going to post up so you can see the flow rating of this pump that they sent to us. Um, next up, we're going to be testing some other models of pumps from different manufacturers. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Uh, let your friends know. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.